guys, welcome back to the channel. We're back today with yet another problem to solve using code. And today the problem is packing. Yes, whether you're traveling overseas, whether you're traveling within the same country, whether you're doing like a staycation in the city, I think everybody needs a packing list, right? Unless there's some people that just pack without a packing list. I don't know, is that possible? But I don't do that. I'm a to-do list girl. I have a packing list and I have a current Notion packing list that I always duplicate every time I need to travel anywhere. This video is brought to you by Squarespace. But very recently when I just went on a trip to San Francisco, I realized that I think I can improve this packing list that I have because currently it's super static. And we could make it a little smarter and more dynamic I think we can improve it by adding a couple of really cool features. First, I can tell it what is the place I'm going to and the time frame of when I'm going to be there. And depending on that, I can figure out what the weather of that location is going to be like. I can then suggest like what type of outfits should I wear. If I'm going to San Francisco and it's going to be windy, maybe I need to pack a puffer. Things like that I would be aware of automatically without having to do another Google search. Yes, I'm just being lazy. But things like that, what else can I add? Of course, we need a checklist to be able to check things off as well. So that would be cool. And another thing that I like in packing list is to know a barometer of how much percent I'm left with packing. I don't know, it just feels a lot nicer if I'm able to see percentage wise how much of it is left. So this is one of those you really don't need it or you think you don't need it but when you have it, you'll be very happy with that type of products, I think. So we're going to try and build it in an hour because that's the amount of time I'm giving myself tonight. It's 10.34 p.m. I'm going to try and stay awake until 11.34 and then let's see what we come up with. I'm like half asleep, so don't blame me if this ends up being a really shitty project. But we're going to try our best to make it good. Let's start off with the design and I learned from my previous mistakes. I'm not going to use Figma this time. No, I think I'm pretty over it. I'm going to stick to using Canva, which is my always all-time favorite tool and we're going to be building a web app because in an hour i don't think i'm going to be able to build an actual app so let's try and build a web app first and if it ends up doing well then maybe one day i'll build an app which is probably never going to happen because i always think that oh maybe one day i'll do this but it never happens oh wait i should start my timer first as a very cheap engineer i refuse to pay for timer so i built my own um yeah i'm, I'm not unhappy with it so we're going to i have Ran, running this and I'm going to start a 60 minute timer perfect let's come up with the different screens so before the design I'm going to just try and come up with what exactly I want features wise so what should we call it pack it up that's cute okay and then we want the user to be able to add in um, things like location and then there's a button once they click on that then we can come up with um, a bunch of checklists but to come up with a checklist logic wise we need to figure out what are the different categories because I think it's nice to split it up into different categories I'm opening up ChatGPT just to ask it that I want to come up with the packing list web app takes in location date frame and then based on the weather I want to come up with a great checklist uh, but I'm asking it if it's better to have static categories or dynamic ones by static I mean that I just come up with things like clothing games electronics toiletries all of these like just static categories or should we make it dynamic so it just really depends on the location that you're going to let's see what it comes up with so it came up with a couple of static categories and the pro is that it's going to be easy but the dynamic categories is adapted you know what we always want to start small so let's come up with the static categories instead so i'm going to use all of these so we definitely have clothing, toiletries, electronics, documents, health, essentials, shoes, accessories. Uh, let's stick to these eight categories first. And we can also allow the user to add categories or to add items to each category that we come up with and to remove things as well. So web apps like this can be such a pain to build. And that's when tools like Squarespace come into the picture, who are also sponsors of this video. Squarespace makes setting up websites so easy. They offer a wide variety of beautiful templates that you can build professional looking websites with in no time. And Squarespace even has built in marketing tools so that you can easily grow your audience and drive traffic to your website. If you're interested in starting out your own website, 
head over to squarespace.com slash life of course to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain using the code life of course. Thanks again to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. Make sure to check them out and start building your website today. Right at the top will be the location and dates that the user has entered. For example, if I'm going to Berlin from the 6th of May to 19th of May, then this is what would be right at the top. And then right underneath, I would want to know the weather. So I would want the weather somewhere here. By weather specifically, I would want to know whether it's sunny, weather type, and then I would want to know temperature. So this was another feature that I wanted. How many socks do you need? Maybe you need one pair of socks per day. So if you're going for example this, okay, I'm for ease of numbers, I'm going to write 6th May to 16th May. And for example, if you're going for 10 days, then maybe you need 10 pairs of socks. And then for t-shirts, perhaps you need five pairs of t-shirts and you might need three pairs of jeans. So things like that, like coming up with numbers that would make sense for the number of days that you're going off for so that you don't overpack and you also don't underpack. So let's try and make it pretty now. Let's look at the color scheme. Nope, not what I want. Oh, I do like this color palette. I always end up going for the first color palette. It's oh, just so easy to please. Okay, so we go for this. Perfect. I like that. And then I need a very cute um, header. So let's find a cute font. I think I'm going to give myself another 10 minutes at least to design things. And then coding time. Ooh, I like this color. I'm yawning already. Okay, cool. It looks fine. It looks fine. And then next we want them to add in the dates. So for dates, and I think we can do like a date picker or something. I think we can make it a bit cuter. This is cute. I think it looks not horrible. So the next step is come up with the next page. We can add the temperature. Degrees Celsius. No, it looks a bit messy. How do I make it look nice? Oh no, I'm spending way too much time on this. Okay, we will have the city, the dates, and then the temperature right below. And then we will start to have all of the categories and the categories will be collapsible. Oh no, it's just 36 minutes. So for the sake of time, I'm gonna just add these three first and then let me show you what it would look like when it expands. We click in on individual categories, then you'll be able to expand and then see the actual list and then you can check it off or not. And if you check something off, then it will look like this. All right, so this is what it will look like. This is a homepage. User will add in the location, then they would add in the dates and the dates when they click on this button, it will open up a date picker and then they will be brought to the next page where we see the city and then the dates that they picked and then we will automatically fetch the weather and there will be the list of eight categories that we had come up with which are static and when the user clicks on one of the categories then you'll be able to see it expand and see all of the different items there that they can then tick off or not and what else did i want i also wanted a percentage of completed this is the scale and then if you're almost done then you're like 35 percent there stuff like that Oh no, it's already like 31 minutes left only? Oh no. Okay, so I have half an hour to actually code this out. This is why I'm an engineer, not a designer, because it takes me so long to design this stuff. Don't even think it looks very good. Let's pull this down. Let's go, we have half an hour. Now, talking about code, I might need a database in the future. But for now, I'm not going to be using a database because I'm not really storing anything. But so now I'm thinking, what should the stack be that I use? Should I start using something that's very, very simple? Or should I start off with something that's more scalable? Let's ask ChatGPT. I want to create a web app with the following screens and deploy it as well in 30 minutes. What tech stack should I use? They say for the front end, I can just use React. Yep, I think I'll just go with React. And then we deploy in Vercel. Sounds good. And then for the weather app API, we have this. And let's do this. Let's build it. So I'm going to create a new folder and open a new VS Code window. The uh, Tailwind CSS didn't work. 
Okay, what's happening with my tool? Could it be my note version? We're going to use this tool called Chakra because I do not want to use Tailwind or more like I want to use it, but I cannot use it. 19 minutes. I'm still trying to get um, the components working. We're going to need three different screens. So I'm going to create a components folder. We need an input screen. I'm not bothering with TypeScript right now. I have like 19 minutes to do this. 17 minutes, just added the basic code. Now it's building and then I'm going to start up the app. So we're going to run it. We see nothing. Let's work on the input screen first. I'm now going to ask Claude for help because I want my uh, CSS to look just like my screenshot. And I think that's what Claude does pretty well. Why is it so small? Oh, it's a tailwind issue. Okay. I really need to figure out why tailwind is not working for me. We have like 11 minutes left. I'm highly doubting that this project is going to be possible in an hour. I don't know, it sounded so easy. I think we wasted so much time on the design. Let's try. See, it looks not terrible, but the thing is, it's super... Z Who would have thought CSS would have taken me 15 minutes? Did it literally make zero difference? Oh, I probably need to update. Oh. Why is this responsive thing not working? This is so annoying. I already feel so tired to build this. Let's pretend like we're zooming in. Assuming that I zoom in and it looks something like this. Then if I add in Berlin and then pick the dates. Oh, I still need to add a date picker. Oh, yeah, let's take a break. I don't think I can do this in two minutes. So I'm going to see if I can do this after a five minutes break. And if I can't, we'll do a part two video for sure. I'm going to put a good spin to this. Sometimes projects don't work out. Sometimes you're not meant to code at night and you're just too tired and Tailwind doesn't work. And I will definitely build this. It's just, should I build it tonight or not? Low-key giving up. I'm going to call it a day or a night. This was so disappointing, but you know, sometimes coding projects are disappointing. I really thought I could build it in an hour. Yeah, I really gave up, but thank you so much for watching. I know this wasn't what you expected, but this is how things go. And I will see you in the next one.